Today I'm going to show you how to make this button in Rive. It's got this hover animation and it's got a couple of advanced concepts, but it should still be friendly for beginners. So let's get started. Yo! So to start with, we're actually going to go to Figma and create the artwork for this. Here you can see I've got the button shape as a rectangle. I've got two text layers and I've got the Twitter symbol itself. And I'm going to export this from Figma. So to do that, I'm going to grab my frame. I'm going to choose SVG and I'm going to make sure to include ID attributes. I don't need the bounding box, um, but I'll go ahead and export the frame and save it. And then we're going to open it up in Rive. So I'm going to start this one over from scratch, make a new document, blank artboard. And here it is. So to get started, I'm going to drag that SVG into my assets window. There it is. All right, so now I can drag it onto my canvas and I've got all the assets. Uh, looks just like it did in Figma. So we have to do this method because Rive doesn't currently have text support. So this is the best way to get these in. Uh, what I wanna do now is kind of organize my layers. So uh, what I'm gonna do is grab these. These are all grouped one more level than I need. So I'm gonna bring them out up here and just delete this group. And I'm going to rename this one. And you can see this is one single path uh, in, in the frame here. Uh, what I want to do, I'm going to make a wing flapping animation on this. So I'm going to actually duplicate this uh, with Command D. Uh, so I've got two of them. And let me hide one. And I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, separate the wing from the body so that I can animate those two pieces separately. So with the path selected, you can go into the edit vertices and you'll see all your points just like you might expect. You can select them and delete the ones I don't want. Like that, that looks great. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the body itself. And I'll do the same thing. Let me open this, go to the path, edit vertices, and this time I'm gonna delete the wing. All right, that looks great. So now I've got both parts and I'm gonna rename these layers. And then actually I'm gonna go ahead and group those. And this whole group will be Twitter logo. Uh, what this does is it lets, it's gonna let me animate the entire group as well as the parts within it pretty easily. And the other thing I'm gonna do, if we go back to this, this one in reference, you'll see that when we hover, uh, everything in the, the tweet at me and the Twitter logo on the top uh, all kind of swing up. And then the what's revealed is the other button underneath and the other text underneath. So I'm gonna group my uh, artwork on this one uh, the same way so that it'll work very similarly. Um, I also need two of these rectangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command D right now and just duplicate that so I've got the second one. I'm gonna call this one button top. And with this one, I wanna group it with, I'm gonna duplicate the Twitter logo now and make move a copy down because I'm gonna end up using that later on. Um, but I want to have the button top, the tweet at me, and the Twitter logo. I'm going to go ahead and group all of those together so that I can animate them together. I also want to, on my button top, add a stroke. And I think I had it on a four pixel stroke like that. And that's good. And one thing that's nice you can do with strokes is you can turn off transform effects so that when you scale it, um, you can see even though the shape is scaled down to nothing, you can still see the width of a stroke there. Um, that can really help with a sort of a faux 3D effect when you're rotating things. But I don't want this to rotate from the middle, I want it to rotate from the top. So we select the group, uh, hit the Y key, move the anchor up to the top, and then I'm going to hit done. And this way, when I scale it, you can see it kind of looks like it's swinging up to the top there. All right, so that's the top group. So I'm going to call this top button group. And then down below, we've got this other rectangle. I'm going to hide the top group for a moment. On this bottom rectangle, I changed the color to sort of a dark, dusty, purplish color. And I also gave it a stroke with four weights. And um, I made it darker around the edges. And I had uh, the Twitter logo. If I move it up above, these are two separate shape paths, but I can grab both paths and uh, put them into one group, which is what I'm going to do in this case. And then this is empty, so I can just delete it. And this actually is just going to be the full logo, even though it's still split into two parts. It's going to have one single um, fill for it. And here I can switch that to a linear gradient. And let's uh, we'll make this darker. Yo! 
creating a new artboard off to the side so that I can copy and paste the Twitter logo into it. And that way I can animate the flapping motion once and reuse it multiple times on my main artboard. I'm gonna go into animate mode. So this whole time we've been in design mode up here, but up here at the top, we can switch over into animate. This is where you're gonna see some new functionality. So we're gonna have a new timeline. And uh, this is where we're gonna animate the wing flapping. So if I expand my layers, I'll have the wing. Uh, and I wanna do the same thing I did with a button. I wanna uh, change the origin point for this so that it's gonna flap uh, where I want it to. So in general, whenever you're making any changes to your artwork that you don't want to be animated, um, like keyed as an animation, uh, you wanna make sure you switch back to design mode, make your change, and then switch back to animate when you're ready. So I'm gonna move this origin point here and I'm gonna actually, yeah, turn it this way so that I can scale it this way and it's gonna flap in that direction. So I'm done there, go back to animate. And uh, let me see, this is gonna scale, yeah, on the X axis. So what I wanna do, I've got the wing selected. I wanna, um, when you switch to animate, everything, you can see the little diamonds, that means you can add the keyframes to them. So I'm gonna add a key right there so that it starts at this position. And I'll move it out, uh, let's say 10 frames. And uh, I'm gonna, drag it down this way to right about to a yeah, negative 100. Uh, that's gonna automatically add a key there. And then I'll just copy the first key and go out to frame 20 and paste it. So now if we play that, we're gonna get a little flapping animation. And I wanna want this to loop, so that's gonna keep going. And I'm gonna set a work area so that I can have it just loop from these keyframes. So if I hit play, we've got a flap going. Uh, it looks Pretty bad though. So I'm gonna highlight all the frames and switch it to easing. Um, and that's looking a little bit better. This might be a little just fast actually. And I might even want to, on this version where it's gonna be flapping, I might want this to actually extend out higher than it's at 99. Um, I'm gonna try stretching that out a little bit here. We'll try 114. Down. I think that that one's okay, but I'll do 114 on this end as well so that it loops. Let's try that. I think that looks better. All right, and I'm just going to call this flapping. And uh, that's all I need. So I can actually now, uh, this is established in an artboard over here. I can reuse it. Um, and before I do that, I want to turn off the background on this artboard so that when I bring it in as a nested artboard, uh, it won't have that background color. So let me uh, go back to design mode, zoom out. Oh, let me name this artboard too. So let's call this bird flap. All right, and go back over here. And now uh, make sure I'm back in this artboard. Let's rename this one to button. Uh, under artboard, I'm gonna go to the nested artboard option and I'll just click to add that. And then here I can choose which artboard I want. I'm gonna choose bird flap and you can see it's gonna place it in there for me. And I can put this right where I want it to go. Uh, I don't want it to be flapping on this top side here. So I actually want this one and I'll call this a uh, nested bird. I'm gonna make some copies of this, but right now I'm gonna move it down into um, my bottom button group grouping, which is gonna be more like down here. And I didn't actually group all those things, but I think I will now. So that's gonna be, if I hide the top button again, it's gonna be this text, the nested logo, and this bottom rectangle. So I'm gonna group that and we'll call it bottom button group. All right, so now my scaling is gonna work. It's gonna reveal what's underneath and I'm ready to start animating this button. Yo! So on this one, I'm gonna go into animate mode and one of the first things I'm going to do is go to this timeline and I'm going to rename this to hover. This is what's going to happen when we hover over the button. So the first thing that's going to happen is this top button group is going to, I'm going to key it in this starting position. Uh, I think we're scaling the Y direction here. So I'm going to key it there. I'll move it out, let's say about 20 frames. And I'm going to change that to zero. And that's going to interpolate for us automatically. I want to change that to cubic easing, and let's play that. Uh, and you can see that that nested bird is already flapping, which is great. And now what I want to do actually is I want to copy this nested bird 
a couple of times. Let me go back to design mode. I'm going to make three copies of this. So I'm going to hit Command D twice on it. And then I'm going to rename these back in animate mode. The other thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to have these birds on a different timeline. And we're going to mix them together with a state machine and make a new timeline. So I'll call this one birds fly. And it will be a looping animation. And here is where I'm going to key the position of these birds, and I want them to just fly off the screen. I'll hide the button top group to get it out of the way. So I've got nested bird one chosen. I'm going to key the position, the scale, and the rotation. And then I'm going to move out uh, 20 frames, and I'm going to move it. So for this one, I'll move over here. I'm also going to rotate it. And here I'm going to shrink it down. Let's go proportionally down to zero. So it's going to kind of fly off in that direction. And put on easing. Uh, one thing you can do just to make it look like it's not flying in such a straight line is offset the X and Y movements a little bit. Um, gives a little bit more of a curved pattern. Um, but then I also want to make sure my scale doesn't make sure it doesn't scale all the way down to zero before that motion finishes. So let's check that out. Okay. Here I'm doing the exact same thing on bird two and three, but making them end in different positions. Now what I want to do, I'm going to give myself a little extra space on this timeline. Bump it up to three seconds, just so there's a lot of space and view the whole area. And I'm going to turn on the work area option here too. So this is um, a technique for making it loop. So I'm going to just drag everything out here to one second. Uh, it's giving some space before and after to work with. All right, now I'm going to offset these. And drag my work area into here. So, and I didn't get the same easing on all of them. Let's try that. It's good. Except I want my I want this to kind of restart so that it looks like they're constantly flying out. So I'm gonna just try grabbing these first frames. I'm gonna copy them, or paste them back here. And then I'm gonna try dragging them right here so this would kind of start over. And here I want to change this frame. I don't want it to ease back between those two. I want it to be a hold keyframe so that it's just gonna jump back there. And I might need to actually adjust my, oh, I did that on that Y key. Okay, I want to do it here too. So it should just jump back into place and then start the loop over again. So let's see. It's a little crazy. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with that. All right, so now I've got the hover. I've got the birds fly. Um, next thing I want to do is create an idle state, and this is gonna be something that's just gonna help to. Uh, reset everything after we hover off of the button. So for, I want to go back to the hover beginning here. I just want to grab my first keyframe here, which is kind of the beginning of the button here, and uh, paste that back in the idle one. I'm also going to key the starting position for all the birds so that they have a place to return to. Now I'm going to set up my state machine. Yo! State machine is like the logic of arrive. <laughs> it's super cool. Um, so what I want to do is set up listeners and inputs um, to make this really function the way that I want it to. And that'll let us do um, some logic within the state machine too. So first thing I'm going to do is get the bottom rectangle shape. And that's the area of the button. And I'm going to use that as my hit area. So when I hover into that area, it'll trigger things, and when I hover out, it'll trigger the reverse. And your hit area can be anywhere in your stack. It doesn't even have to actually be visible. Um, so you can use invisible shapes to be hit areas, uh, which is really helpful for some things. In this case, though, it's a button, so we know where we want people to hover. So if I add a new listener to that, I can select pointer enter, and uh, it's gonna let me uh, modify an input. So I have to create an input, and I'm gonna create one called Boolean, which just has a true or false state, but I'm gonna name it hover um, so that this is gonna be hover in so that when the pointer enters this rectangle shape, it's gonna set hover to true. And I'm gonna do, while I have rectangle selected, I'm gonna do one more just like that. I'll rename it hover out. 
but I'm going to change it from pointer enter to pointer exits, and that will select hover to false, not true, false. And um, we can test that by, you see this checkbox shows up here when I hover over the shape, it's, uh, that's working. So uh, we've got our logic. Uh, those are the things we need in order to make the state machine work. So right now you can see um, it goes from the entry state. When I hit play on the state machine, it goes from entry right into the hover states. Um, what I want it to do first is I'm gonna delete that connection. Uh, I want it to go to the idle state first, and that's gonna basically be a nothing kind of a state. So it'll instantly go to idle, so we hit play. You can see it's just gonna go to idle and wait there. And then what I'm gonna do is drag this connection to hover. And on this little transition arrow, I can set a condition. So I'm gonna hit a plus, add a condition here. And I'm gonna say when the hover is true, that means it's going to transition to the hover state. And um, I can do the same thing in the reverse. And that's gonna give me an arrow pointing the other way. And I'm gonna say when hover is false, go back to the idle state. So let's see how that works. So you can see it didn't start the hover state right away. If I hover over it, it's gonna play the hover state. And notice how it snaps back instantly. Uh, we can actually adjust that and make it much smoother. So we can change the duration time. So if I had 200 milliseconds, that's basically 0.2 seconds. Uh, let's try that. So when I hover off, you can see it's gonna more gradually kind of snap back. I think I do want it to snap back a little faster, just not instantly. So I'll do 100, see how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, now uh, the birds aren't flying out. So next thing I want to do is create a new layer of animation. And um, these two layers are going to play at the same time. Um, and we can do the same thing. We can set conditional logic over here too. So what I'm going to do is set the bird's fly timeline. So if you remember, that's the birds flying out. Um, I'm going to drag that over. And uh, here, I'm going to actually do the exact same thing. I'm going to reuse this idle state because this idle state just kind of resets all the all the things that we have, all the positions and everything. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go from entry to idle, and I'm going to use the same conditions. So here on hover, we want this to switch to birds fly. And here we want uh, when we hover out, when hover is false, we want it to go back. And I don't think I want to set a duration for this one. So um, let's see what happens here. There we go. The birds are flying out. And they're flapping along the way. This seems a little too fast. Ooh, and that just snaps back. Ah, yes, because the the layers farthest to the right um, kind of take precedence. So actually, if I switch these, um, oh, maybe it's overriding it either way. Okay, so um, because it's going back to the idle state, and I didn't set any transition time here, um, it is snapping back, even even though the other one already has 100 milliseconds on it. So now they both say 100 milliseconds, so it should, yeah, look at the transition in between. There we go. And now this is all set up and functioning. Um, and I can adjust things right here. So I can say um, this is maybe all just going too fast. So I'm going to um, stretch this out. I'm going to grab all these keys. And if I hold the Option key, I can kind of scale all of them along the timeline. And see that it slows it down a little bit. Let's see how that looks in the state machine. Hit spacebar to start it, and that looks a little bit better. I like that. So there we go. That is how we set up that button to work. Um, in a future video, I'll show how to actually get this up and running in a Webflow website and make this a clickable link. I uh, hope that was useful. And um, yeah, if you liked it, definitely feel free to tweet me. Um, feel free to subscribe because I'm going to do more of these. And I um, hope you learned something. And thanks for tuning in. Yo!